Hey folks, and welcome back here to Flexline Productions as we bring you the conclusion of the 31st annual City of Mobile Championships. We have just nine holes left to play to determine who will be this year's champion. And our coverage is sponsored by none other than Sarah Land Pharmacy. So be sure to go out and show them some support. My name is Dustin Murray, and joining me is once again local pro JC Rowe. And JC, are you ready to see how this thing finishes up? Ready to wrap it up, man. Ready to see how these competitors battle it out. Uh, we've got Ezra and Maddie battling it up. Uh, one Matt's one stroke behind. Clay and Casey not too far behind. It's really anybody's game at this point. Oh, absolutely. There's still a lot of holes left to play, a lot of challenge left to be had, and the scores are pretty tight. So definitely still you know, up in the air on who's going to come down with this thing. As we move on to hole 10, par three, 311 feet. Pretty tough par three to start the back nine. Uh, most players are probably gonna opt for a backhand hyzer, something soft to flip up. Maybe some flex shot kind of just to keep yourself on top of that hillside. You do not want to trickle down into the left side. Yeah, early left is definitely the biggest problem you could deal with. Also flying too straight could also cause you some issues but usually it's easy to recover par from there if you do. Looks like Matt's going back to that pine, kind of pulls over too much on it. Might have not been a pine based on that flight. Yeah, I'm not sure. We got a left to right wind though too, so that could have also just pushed him more than he thought it was going to. Maybe ND3 or something like that here from Casey Light. Yeah, it's a very similar shot to hole nine, the last hole that we played. Uh, catches a tree. And just kind of pulled it right. Yeah, most players go on mid range here. Looks like the same is going to be the case for Clay Edwards. And he's just watched a couple of players spray him. So he knows if he can get a birdie here, it could, you know, really help him start putting himself in contention. He follows suit. Maybe it's short enough to get. Yeah, he's, he slides into the circle now with that. Doesn't quite overpower it. Yeah, there's also a big moment for Ezra. You know, nine holes left to play. Matty O breathing down his neck. Try to create some separation here with the good tee shot. This is that same M4 that he threw on hole nine. That's money. Plays it perfectly. Yep. Really good look at birdie. Likely to put the separation back to two strokes to Matt. Casey with a long look here. Pretty tough to run that though with the oh yeah, the natural slope behind him. Oh, Matt's in more trouble than I thought. Sit. Oh no. I mean, Ezra might gain more. Yeah, Matt, way down there, Clay. Getting a little half bid there, it looked like. Not too committed to that, just doesn't want to end up in a similar situation as Matt. Yeah, Matt has now a very tough par save putt here. I tried to limit the damage on this hole as Ezra is sitting very near the basket for birdie. Very fortunate not to go any further than he did, too. That's true. And he jams it. What a clutch putt to keep things tight. There was an opportunity for a big swing on this hole, and he saves it. As a though, we'll grab the birdie, and he still does gain that one stroke. So puts it back to two with eight holes left to play. And gains a stroke on the whole card as well. So. Yep. To our second change of the typical Admiral layout. We got hole 11 playing as a par three from the white tee, typically par four from the blues. Gives players an option to actually approach this green uh, as all these players have the distance to get there, but you do have to worry about OB short and natural OB deep with the wooded uh, obstruction. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this change. It, it turned the hole from just kind of a layup shot off the tee and a pretty soft par four into a you know fairly challenging par three that is all about distance control. Ezra does a pretty good shot there, definitely gives himself a look. 
Yeah, like huh? you said, you, you got the natural OB of going in the woods deep, which Matt actually did in the first round, but was able to save par miraculously. Um, but you could also come up short on the hillside or in the water, try not to push it too deep. Yeah, playing from the blue tees, there's really no reason to run it. A couple of players did in years past and got the eagle too, but you don't gain too much off of that. No. Not pushing it deep again. I don't think this one was as bad, but still par at best. So we still got that kind of left to right crosswind here. Casey putting a good move on this. It needs to hurry left, though. Yeah, that crosswind's kind of stopping the disc from fighting as left as it normally would. in the water isn't it? it hits the hillside it looks like yeah so he he definitely crossed in bounds i think that's on the sandbar but not sure if he's in bounds now and matt as you said not in as bad of a position as he was in round one but still a lot to contend with here still not great let's put it that way it's still not ideal and it's all you can really do is just pitch out and make sure you get this power. That's going to be a little bit of a tester, but no gimme. Casey looking for birdie here. Nice. Just kind of not sure if he was just too obstructed to really get a clean putt off there. He also has the OB behind the basket to worry about, so. True. Ezra missing an opportunity to gain another stroke on that there. So it will remain at two strokes pending Matt making that par putt. Uh, right. yeah, like As Matt is next to act. And he will collect a par, so no more separation created. There's something to say about those 20 footers as you're battling it out. You know, you've got what eight holes left to play. You got to hit those. So yeah. and this is clay putting. I'm not sure if this is for birdie or for par. I'm not sure if he trickled over or not. It looks like he probably stayed inbounds. And yeah, he did. So he does get the birdie. Very fortunate there. Just one stroke off Matt now. fighting really well on this lead card. And he's really been fighting well all tournament. Definitely a competitor. Dude's got game. Indeed he does. So we'll go back to the par three theme. Uh, hole 12, 227 here. Very tight gap, slight hyzer to this fast green. Uh, this hole is all about distance control and not pushing it too deep. I just kind of want to hit the gap and then lay on that turtle back green to avoid any type of scary putt. It's pulled a little right there, but shots do fight through, and I believe he's going to have a look. Yeah, he'll have something from there. So again, he's only a few strokes off the lead now, so he's definitely in contention. As are just a little early release there. Sometimes those filter through as well, so... No hard kicks, he might have given himself a long look as well. Matt, harp in hand. He had the pier as well, thinking about changing up his play, but looks like he's going to still go for that kind of baby flex shot. Just try to hit it on slight ante and then float it through that right gap. Oh, just a tree, though, on the way in the green. Looked like he made the correction from round one, but... Just needed a little more juice to get around that tree. Casey going for the standstill off the front of the tee pad. And 
just yanks a little right. That's my tree. <laughs> Apparently he has interacted with that tree before. So just pitching up there. This is a long putt for Matt, and also if he sails it, he could have a potential long comebacker, so. Oh, my goodness, what a putt from Matt. He loves it. The crowd loves it. You love it. I love it. <laughs> Y'all love it out there watching. I mean, nothing like a highlight putt, and that's going to put the pressure on Ezra now. And Ezra with the stepper just airballs it. And now he has kind of a tough comeback or par put. But he'll limit the damage. Matt will just gain one. But still, a stroke of separation means nothing on this course with this many holes left to play. And Clay here, an opportunity to gain one on the leader as well. That's true. Ah, oh, just short and the roll away. Luckily, it stops. Yeah, uphill straddle putts. It's it's not your normal stroke. It can definitely be difficult to get to dial in the power there. It's a similar look here. He'll grab the par. Keeps himself hanging around. Casey White's kind of running out of holes, though, honestly. Like, really needs to start birdie in a lot to kind of put himself in contention. This coverage is brought to you by Sarah Land Pharmacy, one of the biggest disc golf stores in southern Alabama. They have a wide variety of new and used equipment, so they can definitely take care of all of your disc golf needs. Be sure to check them out. All right, welcome back, guys. Move into hole 13, 281 feet, left to right, shape and shot. Uh, the water in the middle is played as casual. Pretty tight gap here. Most players are gonna opt for the forehand just in front of that right-leaning tree and skip into the green. Yeah, this might be that Prince disc again for Matteo, or it could be Enforcer. I think that's the Enforcer, actually. Yeah, that, uh, that'll do. I think he'll like that. Great forehand there from Clay. I was gonna say that needs to be a little more left. I know first round he kind of pulled it to left, so maybe trying to make a bit of a correction from the first round. And this is such a technical backhand. It's so hard. Nah, and man. I had mentioned in round one coverage, he absolutely peered it. So pretty surprising to see him not replicate that. Yeah, either FD3 or MD5 here, I'd imagine from Casey White, but he pushes it too straight. Just a little strong on that, and he's not happy about it. This is kind of a tricky approach shot from Ezra, honestly. Yeah, he's got the, the big gap to the left, probably a big turnover, or just a jump putt. <laughs> it must be nice to be able to just step putt that far away. That's a good luxury to have. In case he still has a long look at it. Yeah, he's, he's been known to drop these a few times. Yeah. just around the outside of the basket. Here's Clay, who was just a little inside off the tee, leaving him a longer putt. Oh, there we go. Kind of toyed with him a little bit. Yeah, there. it was a little inconclusive there for a moment, but it does lay down in the pan, and he will grab the birdie, and that's big news for him to kind of you know, after Ezra taking par on this hole, more than likely he's, you know, gaining a little bit of ground. Great putt from Casey there. Yep. Drop in birdie for Matty O. We'll square him up with Ezra. So now it's tie ball game on this back nine. 
now we move into the hole that could possibly have a little bit of score separation here. Hole 14, par four, 598. Uh, you've got two gaps. As the drone flies, as the inside gap, players will throw a turnover shot with possibly a flex forehand up shot. Uh, you can also push this hole deep and give yourself a, a similar forehand look, maybe not as flexed. And Matty Ola can go for the backhand turnover play. Could definitely get you more advanced down the fairway if hit correctly. Oh, still not bad though. Yeah, that that's going to be a tough look to get up and down for a birdie, but done, if done right, it, it should have a routine par. I mean, this feels like a bonus birdie hole though. Every time, like if you're getting a birdie here, you're laughing. Oh, definitely. Top three difficult holes on the course. I would imagine. I don't know, statistically speaking, it says that, but just based on how it shapes, how technical it is, you would think it's up there. We've got the forehand option here from Mr. Edwards, and it looks nice. Real nice. That's a great Thank shot. Ezra putting a great move on that. He's pushing to that longer alleyway. Not really known for his forehand, but he does uh, pull him out every now and then. Yeah. It's just kind of a maze you have to navigate in your second shot to get up to the green. That's the only issue with this hole, no matter how good you throw your tee shot. As Casey throws a great forehand as well off the tee, puts him right in center position. And so Matt's first, and he's got a lane. But to keep a forehand straight enough for long enough is going to be difficult. And he no. just yanks it. Yeah, that's that's the difficulty. Like you said, you have to navigate that maze. Uh, clear gap there, but it's pretty tight. It's tight, and you have to keep your disc just straight for so long. So Casey kind of in the middle of both of the gaps, but it's a pretty good job of advancing down the fairway enough okay. to mm -hmm. at least salvage par. Yep. I mean, Edwards is in a great position to birdie the hole, actually. This is prime real estate off the tee. And he's been throwing really good standstill forehands all tournament. All right, he'll need to pop this out, let it fall to the left. Two inside. Uh, kind of sneaky. It might have, actually. Oh, you're right. Wow, I thought he got caught up inside. I, I mean, it did look like it. I, I felt like he wanted to flex it a little more than that, but it got up there, so who cares? A rare forehand from Ezra. <laughs> the gallery questions it. So just a little inside. <laughs> I love the animation. <laughs> Didn't really like his shot. I mean, he was in a hard spot. Again, you, you can't be too upset with the par on this hole. As Matt, Matt what is he thinking here? I said Matt would love one here. Is he's kind of just popping a little touch putter shot around. Oh my goodness, you're kidding. That is, that's something. It's about as good as it gets him right there. I mean, did not expect him to get that good of a result from there. Casey okay, so wanted to run that a little bit. As, as you mentioned earlier, he's got to make up some ground. Yeah, he's running out of holes. Doesn't really give uh, that a bid. Ezra, you know he wanted that, but. Yeah, it's one of those things now where you're tied up with your closest competitor, you know every stroke matters. You want to get birdies, you're trying to pull out ahead. Yes, yeah, not essentially this hole. match play here. Yep. Um, Matt's got the box too, so Matt makes a mistake. Ezra knows he's got to yeah. you know, capitalize on that. With that said, I mean, Clay Edwards lingers in the shadows. He's only two strokes behind. He definitely could still get in the mix here. One stroke behind. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot he actually <laughs> smashed the forehand there. So yeah, one short behind. So he's, he's in the mix again. Right. So we're going to move on to hole 15. Two gaps off the tee, either forehand or backhand. You at least want to get to this opening right here to give yourself a, a look into the green. You can definitely press this one further down the fairway to give yourself an easier upshot though. Um, a really tricky one if you get off the fairway. Man, now Clay has the box and a chance to maybe put a pressure on the two leaders if he can hit a good 
my shot here. He's opting for the flex forehand. Right side, maybe? Right side. Looks like it. It's definitely doable. Oh. Nope. It confused all of us. <laughs> we'll never know. Not me. I'm last. But he did yank it a little bit too hard left there. Matt. Probably looking to go backhand right side. That's kind of his normal play on this hole. Probably the pine. Like, slightly overstable mid-range. Yeah, you, you really don't have to do too much off this fairway. It just makes it easier. But if you can control it, you get the smooth hyzer shot right there. Settle down. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that that's going to set him up. He can. He has both options there. He can throw a backhand hyzer or a forehand if you wanted to. Yep. Calls check and smashes the time box. And so now it's on Ezra's move. I think Ezra's going big here. You're right. Will it turn enough? Why are you doing stable dip? Four! Nope. What's the flippiest dip in my bag? I like it out of your I do too. That thought was I mean, he still might be able to scramble from there, honestly. I mean, he made a lot of forward progress before he caught the woods. Must get for Casey. No! Oh, come on. You freaking trying to turn it yourself. Just let the disc turn. So still not a bad look right here for Casey. Uh, he didn't like it out of his hand, but he can still get up and down for birdie here. Just a little inside, it looks like. Bites through the beautiful shot from Casey. Keeping right? himself in the mix, if he can get the birdie here. You feel like if he pars this hole, though, just by the powers of mathematics, he's kind of getting out of it. Yeah. Of course, you never know what happens on 18, man. Like, someone can blow up, you get a birdie, there's still a chance, but. A clay looking forehand roller, maybe here. Just try to pitch out of the gap and advance down the fairway. Needs to hook up, and it's doing it. Wow. Oh, yeah. What a scramble yeah. shot. As now Ezra having to try to do something similar here. You know, he's got stuff in his swing too, so does a great job oh, of yeah. out there with some power. He rolls on up there. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he'll he'll have a long look for par, but I mean he's known to make them as Matt kinda uh -huh. he stops his shot because of the tree. Oh <laughs> somebody on hole seventeen hit a gotcha. tree. Gotcha. Looks like harp in hand here, trying to get up to the green for birdie. And that will do a chance to maybe grab the lead. So similar distance from Yakub's putt in round one, if y'all didn't catch that. Not quite going to happen for Clay here. Yeah, not a similar result. So. Long look for Ezra. And he gets it done, what a putt. And so Matt will be not gaining any sort of solo lead. Yeah, Ezra's not going down without a fight here. Man, you, you consider what the clutch par save putt from Matt on hole 10 and now that putt from Ezra, they are just not letting up on each other, man. It's a ESPN instant classic. It is. <laughs> Oof. Is he just off again? So yeah, you're feeling like his chances to win are kind of out of it at this point, but still a chance to have a strong finish. Yeah, just just a note that was from very short off the tee. It was almost in line with the white tee. It ended up deep at the basket. So pretty impressive. <laughs> I know he would love to capitalize on that, but just wanted to make note. Here's Matt for pretty much a tap in birdie to stay even with Ezra, who just hit a nasty putt from range. Keep himself with a share of the lead. And Clay will hang around, just two strokes behind. This coverage is brought to you by Sarah Land Pharmacy, one of the biggest disc golf stores in Southern Alabama. They have a wide variety of new and used equipment so they can definitely take care of all of your disc golf needs. Be sure to check them out.
All right, we move into the final par three of the course. Hole 16, 260 feet, pretty tight gap right off the tee, kind of opens up and then bottlenecks back down. Uh, the miss here is right, as you can sometimes filter through these trees, but most players are probably gonna take a putter, maybe a mid and throw it down the middle, most likely putter. And you feel like it's a musket birdie for everybody at this point. I mean, this is one of the easier holes on the back nine, and considering the scoring positions, you gotta get this one. It, it should be pretty routine for all these guys. Kind of filtering left for Matt. First field goal. <laughs> <laughs> and if you had Matty O making a football reference on your bingo card, well, that was a sure bet anyway, but you got it. Ezra looking to get down there. Great shot from him. So it looks like things should remain neck and neck for our two leaders going in the whole 17 based on their tee shots. Clay, though, pressure on him to match to stay within two with two holes left to play. Plays a good little hyzer flip shape there. Oh, yeah. So he does his job to, you know likely stay within two of the lead. Is he just... Too much hazard. Yeah, not really quite getting enough on it for the standstill there. Still has a look. Pretty tricky. I've been here before, and let me tell you, it's not an easy putt. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know this group of trees very well on this left-hand side of the green. Uh, have to split four trees basically and yeah almost yeah, not quite so that likely does it for him as far as running at the title but again can still have a good finish matty oh pressure putt here this is no gimme yeah a little contested 25 ish footer oh a little stall there He's refocusing. On. <laughs> yeah, he's not one. Usually he doesn't pump fake. Usually he kind of just commits, but a little extra focus on that one, but gets the job done. Gets his birdie. Ezra. Similar distance putt, but not obstructed at all. And he'll get it done. And so we remain all square for Ezra and Matteo. And Clay likely will keep himself within two with this putt. Yeah, so it's really anybody's game as we move into 17. 17 can be a pretty tough par four. You've got two gaps off the tee with most players probably opting for the inside route. Trying to get as much distance as you can to get to this wall of pine trees right here to make the gap easier to hit as you approach the basket on this downward sloping green. So first to act will be Matty O and he needs a clean drive here. Looks like he's got his orbit drive in hand, so looking to attack with distance driver. Maddie going Heiser here. He usually doesn't do this. He usually plays left side, I feel like. This is a little different play for me. Yeah, but it works out. Yeah, the, the left side is definitely how you advance the fairway a lot further, but um, that might be the higher percentage play for him here. Yep. As we're also going right side on Heiser. Catches an early tree though, so it looks like Matt slight advantage as far as lie goes. Yeah, and that's that's really my problem with the hyzer is you throw a good shot and there's that cluster of trees that's pretty center cut on the screen. Mm -hmm. it, they just always get in the way. Yeah, those pesky trees. It's like they move in front of your disc or something. Yeah, this is a tough hole. One of the harder par fours. Play is going left side. And just inside. Kind of fought up there, though. Yeah, he, he really didn't hit anything solid, so. There's another group of bushes right behind that, though, so let's see where he ends up. This is a 
famous DD3 here from Casey White. Is this the Just Send It or Just Send It Again? I can't remember which one. You know if you watch his content. Right, he's looking like he's trying to send it here. He needs to flip up a little more. That's tough. Look like a really good line, actually, but just catches a kick. So fortunate to stay in this open gap right here, so he's got like a little run up to... He's trying to go backhand roller, though, and catches a lot of cabbage. Still working. Still fighting. Though. Yeah, look at this. I mean, he puts him in position to save par. So right here, Ezra's going to have to do this crazy backhand kind of flip up turnover. Yeah, from this angle, birdie is just so hard. I mean, it fights through there. Oh, that's a long putt, but hey, it's a look. Very fortunate to split that little gap that he did. I feel like you're you're just happy to get a look on this hole. Just this this horizontal line of trees that guards kind of the approach shots just so tough to get through clean and on the right angle and slide it to the green. <laughs> There's a lot of things that have to go right. And well unfortunately Clay didn't even check the first box, not able to get through the line of trees. Again, it's tough. Yeah. Now Matt's lined up in a really great angle to have that first challenge not be as difficult. He's going with that pure here, it looks like. Nick Island. And it's a little... Yeah. Oh, oh boy. He gets a good kickoff. Yeah, straight at the basket the entire time. Unfortunately, there was a tree between him and the basket. <laughs> but uh, he kicks left and actually has a putt for birdie. And depending on where Ezra is at, I think Matt might take a lead going in the 18 here, if he can hit that putt. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't count Ezra out just just yet, though. No, nah, not after the long putt. I saw him hit a couple holes ago. I was <laughs> definitely not. That uh, was a great shot from Casey White, by the way. Sick par. <laughs> All that for a par, he says. Yeah. But hey, that was still a good shot. Props for props are due. So Clay going with the forehand here to kind of open the gap up a little more. The stand still for him and just had to turn. Slows yeah. down. He's just so good at stand still forehands. And oh, Ezra's closer than I thought. Yeah, I mean, and he'll get it. Well done from Ezra. Beautiful part. I did think he was closer to 50, but. Yeah, so it turns out that his second shot was actually way better than I thought and uh, <laughs> had a. Easy putt there. Not easy, but, you know, not as difficult as I thought it was going to have. So we'll be all square on the whole 18, more than likely. So Clay really needs this putt to even consider yeah. being in contention. This mm -hmm. is for par here. Yeah. And he will get it. And the thing is, three strokes on 18, it's not impossible. Yeah, three strokes from two competitors. A little bit Unlikely, more likely. But... Yeah, <laughs> the likelihood's not there, but he still has a fighting chance. If he can birdie the hole and, you know, a couple of blow-ups happen, he might be able to find himself maybe at least in, like, a playoff position. And Matt will connect, and it will keep it tied up with one hole left to play. And 18 is a treacherous one to decide things. This is going to be a fantastic finish. Yes, it is. Hole 18, tight corridor gap. You have one tree in the middle of the fairway off the tee. Uh, players are going to try to throw it either dead straight or maybe try to finish a little left to get into this gap right here. You don't have to get too far up. You really just want to place the disc to the straight off of your upshot, but then give yourself an approach into the green. So you don't have to really get greedy on the second shot. So Matt will have either the luxury or the fear of, of taking the first action. Kind of depends on your mentality. We'll call it the honors. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> kind of somewhere in between. Come on. He pipes this one down. It needs to get, yes, it gets off of that tree. Yes. And beautiful shot. 
And so, yes, now the pressure is well and truly on Ezra. Because Matt has done everything he needs to do off the tee here to be successful. And Ezra has to match. And well. Very similar look at. Very well done. So it's a shootout, man. Match play. I think he threw past Matt there, so keeps it's, Matt uh, first. And so Clay Edwards' percentage of being in contention has kind of gone down after those two tee shots, but if he can still throw a good tee shot and fight for birdie, there's still some hope. <sighs> Just off the center tree. And gets it down there. And I'll tell you what, no matter what happens, props to Clay Edwards for playing a fantastic tournament. He was on coverage every round, played very well, and uh, no matter what, he's going to have a strong finish here. Yeah, very consistent golfer. Casey's sending it. Catches a pine cone. Probably slows it down a little bit, but not much, and he's in an ideal spot as well. Yeah, so a great collection of tee shots from our lead card to finish off the tournament here. A whole 18. So Clay does not have to get greedy here, as I mentioned in the flyover coverage. It's really just a, a soft flex forehand to get himself looking at the basket. Oh, he yanks it a little left. I think he's going to get away with it, though. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. He misses that one tree that's kind of on its own little island out there and gets around it and comes but flexes back in. So and Casey's trained up perfectly on this gap. So he's gonna have a strong finish. He just catches that one tree, or oh, I say the one tree. There's there's a lot five or six <laughs> trees down there. And oh my goodness, Maddie's in the left gap. This is such a great tee shot. You dream of being here off the tee, I feel like. And not getting too aggressive here, making sure that it gets deep enough and doesn't cut off inside. Yeah. Fortunately, it hits the tree, but he should be able to... Still has a chance for that. Yeah, so... It's going to be a harder look, but there's still, there's still a shot at it. So Ezra can put the pressure on here. If he just gets closer to the basket, he can... Keep putting the pressure on Matt. Yeah, both players are on pace for birdie for this hole, but Ezra is going to have the easier approach shot. Yeah, he's just got to jump put to the basket now. Yeah. I guess the first time Clay's standstill forehand has actually let him down, which still has a look, but... And it all comes down to this, JC. This approach shot, a little bit tricky. Some trees in the way, a tight corridor ahead, but he's got to make this happen to stay in contention. That is great, these little one-steppers. And he has done his part of playoff, certainly in the cards now, as long as everything goes according to plan. There from Casey White, so he'll finish strong. Nothing to be ashamed of. As Ezra, like you said, just basically has a step putt, jump putt approach to get up and down. He's trying to win it though. Yeah. Trying to go for the eagle putt there. But uh, looks like it will be a playoff between Ezra and Matt. Just off the top there from Clay, but still, again, fantastic tournament from him through and through. And so it's going to be down to a head to head matchup as it's been for most of this back nine. Ezra versus Matt Oram in a playoff for the win as Casey White looks to finish strong here on this last putt. And he'll get it done. So a pretty good tournament all in all for Casey White. Nothing to be ashamed of. 22 under par. And 
And once again, tip your hat to Clay Edwards for a well-played tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going into extra holes. We're going to play five. a loop one through three until somebody wins this tournament. We'll see you all over on one. Daddy four. And so there you have it from Tate himself, a loop of holes one through three, sudden death. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after 18 holes, we've come down to a tie. This will be a sudden death, sudden death playoff, loop one through three until we have a winner. Is everybody ready? Yeah. First on the tee box for our sudden death playoff. You'll give it up for Matty O. A hole one, one of the tougher holes on the course, could decide the playoff right here. So yeah, one of those holes where you have to hit the gap off the tee to even have a chance at birdie, and even then, birdie is very difficult to attain on this hole. Par's a very good score. I think par could push this. Yeah, Matt's going with this hyzer again. The safer play needs uh, to hurry. Kind of kicks off. All right, next up, Ezra Robinson. And with that two shot, Ezra can come up clean here. Yeah, he, he goes that inside route too, so he can put it away right now. Matt's got work to do to get up and down. A little right. Hits a tree, and they're both kind of in dead water. Everybody hang back. So both these players are really going to just be probably fighting for par to push. Yeah, there, there's really, barring some miracle, there's really no way to get up and down for birdie from these positions. So they didn't quite hit the inside gap that he wanted to, push a little right. He should be pretty easy to get up and down. Matt actually... Yeah, he actually has a chance. You're right. I think... It's a tough angle, though, to slide into the green from this position. Yeah, I think he's playing a hyzer up to the mouth. Beat it. It's the smart play. Oh! Oh, wow. That's, that's a really good kick. That is beautiful. He has a chance now to put it away because Ezra can only par from here. And that's going to be a long par putt at that. Wow. So this is for the win right now here from Matt, just outside the circle. And the stepper is just a touch low, but pressure still on Ezra to make this putt to push. This yeah. is not an easy putt. Very similar distance. Absolutely. This is, again, just outside the circle. So he's going to have to come up a clutch here to move on the hole too. And count it, Ezra says he wants more. And so hole two we go. But Matt needs to get his composure back right away. He knows he had a chance for the win right there, right then, but just got to move on, put that in the past. Yeah, and you, you don't want to do it on this. You don't want to make a mistake on this hole and, and lose the playoff here. This is probably one of the easiest holes in the course. Probably looks a lot harder in a sudden death playoff, though. Yeah, with the pressure and everything. I agree. As you know, it's a musket birdie. Matteo has done his job, puts it right next to the basket. Ezra now must match. Taking no time. Ooh, he's got to work for this one. Needs to make this putt to move on, and this is a long one. And with a tree right there in the way, so he has to kind of hyzer around a little bit. But he cans it. What a butt for Ezra. We saw him clutch up on a hole 15 in regulation, and he does it here again on hole two of the playoff. Man's got ice in his veins. Dude, he, neither of these players are letting up, as Matt should punch this one in no problem, and we should be moving on the hole three. Wow, this is a fantastic back and forth there. And this is a tricky little par three coming up next, by the way. You gotta kinda of wait a little bit for the you know, spectators to get in position and all the pressure's on. All right, and two types of shots too. Matt's going to that inside route, just as he did in, during the round. Ezra opted for outside turnover, so. Yeah. 
not looking to go straight at it with the warden. And that is going to play. That's a long putt, though. I kind of like Ezra's turnover shot here because it settles into the green a little better. Yeah, he's right next to the basket. And so pressure's on Matt. It's basically the roll swap from last hole. Now Matt is the one that must hit a putt from distance while his competitor sits next to a drop-in to keep this playoff going. And again, he is a seven-time comm champion. He's won it three years in a row. This is his home turf he's trying to defend. And it comes down to this putt. You try to keep it going. And he finds it. And the hometown crowd is excited to see that this will keep going. As they go back to hole one. And who knows how long this playoff is going to last now. Who's going to bend first? Hole four of the playoff now. Yeah, let's see if these guys can make a good correction from the first time they played it in the playoff. Yeah, if you remember, both players kind of got caught up off the tee. Matt hit a beautiful second shot and had a chance to win it right away with the birdie putt, but just came up short. Ezra, meanwhile, had to kind of miracle his way to a par to extend. So as you said, we'll see if these players can try to get through this one a little bit more clean this time around. Four. Maybe a little overcorrected from Matt. Gallery clears out. <laughs> that is, I believe, the new uh, general, which is Ricky's new signature just from DD. So Ezra changes his gameplay here. He goes Heiser. It is the easier gap to hit. So maybe just feeling a little bit safer with that, and he gets it done. And so now both players are looking at birdie here. Yeah, a little chip shot forehand here. Oh, no. Is that inside? Yeah. Nope, it's there. Yeah. It was inside, but fought through, so. Yeah. So just kind of like a little jump ante putt here for Ezra to get up and down for his birdie. That'll do it. And so it looks like we should be seeing another hole here. And DD shot. Man, oh man. Who knows when this is going to end, man? You can just feel the tension. These guys keep clutching up. They do. And it's been back and forth. Each have taken a share in making magic happen. And now we come back to hole two for the second time around. So this is hole five of the playoff. Again, one of the simpler holes of the loop, but with the pressure on, things get different. Matt, though, unfazed, parks it and pressure on Ezra to match. Remember, last time he came up a bit short and had to hit a long putt. So similar in that instance. He's like the exact same, same spot. Three, same spot. <laughs> so he has to do it again. Can Ezra match his efforts from the first time around and hit a long putt to push this playoff? Oh, no. Just over the top. And that should do it. Matt, very near the basket. Should just be a tap in for the win. Oh, yeah. And there you have it, a five-hole playoff to get it done, but Matt is an eight-time City of Mobile champion, has now went four in a row. Hey, the home turf. Of the 31st annual City of Championship and reigning champion, Matty O! Westside, Saban. Picnic Island. Thank you. And probably one of the
of the harder wins for Matty O at the City of Mobile Championships. Having to go to a 5 hole playoff to get it done this time around. But there it is. Eight-time champion at City of Mobile. And four in a row is Matty O. But shout out to Ezra Robinson for putting on a fantastic bit of competition to push that to so many holes in the playoff. Again, shout out to Clay Edwards. Fantastic tournament through and through. Finishes third. Casey Light finishes in the top five. We had a lot of other strong competitors out there play well also. So, again, thanks so much for everyone tuning in the coverage here at Flexline Productions. Be sure to like and subscribe for future coverage. Again, I was Dustin Murray. With me was JC Rowe, and uh, we appreciate you so much for tuning in. Catch you next time. Peace.